Hello again everyone. This is the second in a uh, series of tutorials for the AN24 by Felis for X-Plane 10. Uh, I got some comments back from my other tutorial. First of all, thank you so much for uh, viewing it. I hope everybody uh, really enjoyed that because I really had some fun making it despite uh, some hiccups. Hopefully uh, today's tutorial will go a little bit better. But um, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to spend a little bit more time on the NCNS, that's the Non-Cooperative Navigation System, and use it in kind of a, I guess you would call it a real-world application. Uh, we're sitting here at the end of the runway. This is a pretty interesting little runway, and I'll get a little quick story in that in just a moment. So uh, for those of you guys who uh, know your geography pretty well, might recognize this large body of water as the Caspian Sea. And the inspiration for today's flight was actually a movie called The White Sun of the Desert, which came out uh, back in 1970, believe it or not. And it's sort of like a Western film, but it's shot in kind of the eastern part of Russia. And uh, the interesting thing about that particular thing is it created the expression, you know, the east is a delicate place. And our little travel today will be a delicate kind of journey. So uh, normally I was going to say, hey, let's start over here and go over here. That should be kind of fun. But um, it's kind of a long flight, and even with some zigzagging, it wasn't quite what I was looking for, so I kept looking, kept looking. And then I came across this little airport way, way, way down here. This is Haydar, Haydar Aliyev International Baku. I probably uh, butchered that because, again, my um, accent isn't always the best when it comes for those kind of things. We're going to be traveling kind of a rather boring, rather straight route across the Caspian Sea all the way over to here, where you have Turkmenbashi Airport, which is going to be a really, really quick flight at the same time is going to allow us to really showcase some of the capabilities of the NCNS. So, just like before, we're going to start by doing a little bit of flight planning. This looks like a pretty straight shot. It's about 138 nautical miles. We'll calculate that in kilometers in just a moment. We could set our compass basically to 93 degrees and just kind of choo-choo right along this line if we wanted. But you know me, I like to make things a little more complicated and potentially more realistic. Now, if we were on an aircraft that had a sophisticated, you know, remote navigation system or an FMS or GPS, we could dial in all these little handy waypoints and get us going right where we want to go. Uh, that's too easy. So um, we don't have any of that on our aircraft. And although we do have a GPS, we're not going to use the GPS today. So I'm taking a look here and trying to find the most logical plan. That's looking pretty good right up there. So let's go ahead and start by going to Amaku, which is right here. Then we'll go over to Rodar. Looks pretty good right there. Nice little intersection. Just checking to make sure the arrows aren't facing the wrong direction here. Looks good. Then we'll go ahead and take this one down to Tugar. Once we get to Tugar, we'll go straight for a little bit, take a right-hand turn, and even use the um, VOR station here to go ahead and zero in on Turkmenbashi. Should be a pretty good flight. Now, I'm going to check the weather carefully this time, because last time I kind of got tricked here. Looks like there's a turbulent segment here that's going to make things a little more exciting. But other than that, it looks like it's going to be relatively clear, maybe a little bit of clouds. And on this side, let's take a look here. Cabox is going to be very clear, so it should be a pretty easy flight. So let's go ahead and fly back over to our aircraft and start setting this thing up. Get out our trusty checklist and let's go ahead and get started. Load page. Alrighty. Let's see here. Um, we're going to be carrying two attendants today. Uh, we're going to have Nastika and Svetlana. So they, they've eaten a little bit too much so they put on a little bit of weight unfortunately. The crew is going to be just myself up front. Unfortunately our navigator Boris is on holiday. Too bad. Carrying a couple of folks there, a little bit of baggage there. Okay, let's take a look. Looks good. Ah, here we are. Destination AP distance kilometers. Let's go ahead and look that up real quick. So we know our total flight is going to be 144 nautical miles. So if we go into Google and type convert 144 nautical miles to kilometers, there's our magic number. We always like to round up when it comes to flying if we can help it. Ah, 300. Lucky. Let's see, alternative AP distance kilometers. Mm, let's go find an alternative real quick and figure out how far away that's going to be. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, let's see here. Most likely, if the bad weather is going to be coming, it's going to be down there. We probably want to alternate up here. Ah, there we go. So let me go ahead and clear this out real quick. Let's use this as alternative. See, that's going to be 292. Ooh, that's going to be a bit of a flight. That's a 540 kilometer alternative. Let's go ahead and dial that in. Again, we like to round up when we can. Whoops. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Everything's in the green. Make a note here. 
to uh, know exactly what the trim is going to have to be set for takeoff. I'm going to click on load. Good to go. It's at 23, I believe. Go ahead and set this up real fast. Perfect. All right, all set. Go ahead. Don't need to close that. We'll go back to our original flight plan very quick. All right, going over here. Uh, go up here. Go over to Rodar again. Then scoot on to Tugar. All right, looks good. Go ahead and close it out. We'll need that in just a minute. Okay, let's go back to our checklist and continue. All right, elevator trim. Checked left fuel counter, half fuel load. Let's see here, our total fuel load is 2260. So if I grab our calculator real quick, 2260 divided by two is 1130 per counter. So I'll go ahead and close that out. All right, let's head on down here. There we are. And now for the right side. All right, remember, the reason we use this counter is because this is more accurate than this guy up here, which is supposed to tell us how much fuel we actually have on board. You can even see it's not showing right now. All right, looks good. Fuel quantity indicators, flow meter, automatic fuel flow. We'll go through that. Looking good. All right, serve page. Prepare to flight. Oh, looks like we're closing the back ladders. Good. Gear blocks red. I'm going to leave those alone for today. Ground power green. It actually is green, which is good. All right, power source. I'm going to scoot up here again. And switch that down. All right, lighting as needed. Um, looks pretty good to me. I don't think I need to change anything just this moment. Inverter PO750 and PT1000. Fire system. ADF rig, uh, radio set frequency. Okay. Whoop. Now this is going to be tricky because there's not really a lot of ADF radios way, way out here in the desert, but there actually is a couple of them at our destination. So I'm going to go ahead and pop open the radio panel real quick. Go ahead and drag this out so you folks can see. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our destination very carefully. If you right click and actually use your middle mouse button on this, it brings up a really, really handy little page. You can see there's a VOR we're going to be entering in a minute. And you can also see that there are a couple NDBs to help us out. It looks like 911 and 610. Go ahead and choose on version 911. Uh, that looks good to me. So, of course, if we do 911 minus 880, that gives us 31. Looks like we were very close. Perfect. I could turn this thing on, but we're probably not going to get a signal as you guys can see this far away. So then let's go ahead and dial the other one in as well. 610 so we don't get ourselves horribly lost. All right, we can do the math quick. That's just 30. Again, the way I'm going ahead and computing this is you add this number to this number to get your frequency. There we are. So 580 plus 30 is going to equal 610, which conveniently is the frequency we're going to be using. Again, I can switch this on, but we're not going to get much of a signal all the way out here. But this radio is all set up for now, so go ahead and close that. Shoran RSBN. We're not actually going to be using Shoran today, so I'm going to leave this alone. NCNS, set course and mode. This is important. This instrument is going to be our number one user today. We're actually going to use a slightly different method to use it so that you have an opportunity to see it. Let's take a look here. This looks good. So our first course we're going to be doing, we're actually going to take off, go around the airport, and actually engage the NCNS system when we get back to the center of the airport because we're actually taking our measurement for angle from the center of the airport. This little bit of distance might not seem like much, but it can be huge later on. Now, as you probably remember from the last video, or if you're new, this instrument, I should say, the NCNS, only takes true headings. So, or true course, rather. So we need to not use this number of 79 degrees, but instead use this number right here where it says 85 degrees T, meaning true. So I'm going to go over to my map angle and dial in my first one. All right, that looks like 85 degrees. Good. 
Now, what's going to be a little different today is instead of setting up the backwards bias, what's going to be confusing to some people in this instrument, I'm going to actually let it run positive and simply keep an eye out for the moment that we're going to have to execute our first turn to get ourselves back on course. I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to leave this alone. We're going to leave all this stuff alone now as well. Go ahead and close that. Now we're going to go to GPS. <laughs> no. DMA, um, we can set up the DMA. If we go to uh, the, our destination airport, which is in Turkmenistan, there is actually a DME VOR on 112.30. So it's probably not a bad idea to set that in there so we can at least keep track of how far we are away from our destination. Looks good. All right. What else we got? VOR radios. Again, I'm going to take that 112.30. I'm actually going to dial it into our VOR just in case we get lost. You never know. Looks good. And it looks like there's another VOR station based on this close enough, which is ironically the exact same VOR station we're going to be coming from. And that's 115 degrees. So go ahead and dial that in as well. Just again, in case we need to triangulate or get ourselves unlost. All right, VOR radios are all set up. Navigation source, both or shore end. If you go to the nav left page, there's this little option up at the top, which allows you to pick which drives these instruments here and over here. This time, we're actually only going to be using the both option because we're not using shore end or anything along those lines. All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, radar altimeter, set minimums. Our minimums are typically 60 meters. It's about 200 feet. Looks good to me. Transponder code set mode alpha. So if we stick our heads up here, you've got our transponder right here. These would represent the different digits of the transponder, and this would represent the mode. It's going to be an A, and I'm just going to leave it on the uh, United States standard VFR code of uh, 1200. Good. All right, before start up, parking brake set. That's this little switch right here. I can press the B and go ahead and pull that sucker out. Power source on board up. You got it. All right, we're now on our internal batteries. Service page, all green except ground power. Looks good. Navigation lights on up. If you scroll down here, you have the navigation lights. Turn those on. Throttles. I'm going to go ahead and push the throttles. And notice this throttle gets stuck when I pull it back down. That is the APU throttle. Skip that step, and your APU will not start. It's kind of frustrating. Vibration monitor. Left fuel valve. All right, I'm going to go through this step relatively quickly. Then we're going to come to the other side. Done. Make sure everything's green. No red. Looks good to me. RU19 valve. The RU19 is right down here. This is our APU. Click that. Wait for the green light. Good. We're going to take our heads and tilt it down here. Go ahead and open up the panel for the main switch. Click that. Set it to start. Open up the hatch. Here we go. Now, if you want to monitor the start of this, you just have to pay attention to these two instruments right here. All right, we've got ignition. Looks like our RPU is coming up. Starter cutout, oil pressure, everything looks good. Now we're going to reach up here, and we're actually going to connect it to the rest of our uh, aircraft so that we're not running off the battery. All right, took care of that. Looks good, looks good. Electrical load minimum. We were good about that. Time to get started. Engine start mode, start. Go ahead and lift this sucker open as well. Set it to start. Set it to left. Do, do, do. Ground. Good, good. Open that up. Set it to ground. And here we go. Starter engaged. We're going to scroll back over here. And we're just going to keep an eye on these two instruments. Now, in the real world, we probably want our hands right on the cutoff valve in case something went wrong, but I think we're going to be all right. Oop. It's coming alive. Stand by for ignition. There she goes. Now you're going to watch this immediately start counting down as you start burning that fuel. All right, looks good. Now we're going to cheat a little bit and bring up our left panel here so we don't have to stick our heads back over. Switch it to the right side. Make sure we're stable, really. You don't want to overload anything. Okay, here we go. Starting the right engine.
repair free condition. There we go. <laughs> go ahead and take a look at our list. When everything is good, we're going to actually turn on all our generators and then shut off the APU. Alright, looks good. Wait for about 60% or so. Nice. Alright, we're going to start up at the top. AC generators on and off. DC generators on. GS24, which is our APU, we're going to shut that one off. But everything looks like it's operating pretty good, which is good news for us. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and fire up, uh, let's see here. I'm going to shut this guy off, and we're going to secure all our switches. Perfect. After start, here we go. I always like to kind of start on the left and work my way across. Radar altimeter, UVID, which is our feet instrument. And we're going to work our way. We're actually going to be taking off and landing in a second, so I as well set that. Window heat on, PCU on, covered, added to artificial horizon, rather. Go ahead and give that a little tug. It's going to take just a minute to warm up and actually engage. I'm going to scoot over here, double check, anti lock brakes. I'm not expecting any rain today, I'm going to leave those off. Landing lights, we're going to take off in a moment, so might as well get those ready. Cow flaps, all that stuff's already been preset. Keep heading over. TSI on this side, on. VOR ADF, it's not really critical at this point, I'm going to leave it on ADF. Icing system, make sure you turn that on, just to check to make sure it's working. Looks good. Turn on the GFC, the other artificial horizon, the BPA. IGV, we don't really need to worry about that today. Main prop system, not going to worry about that. Pedo heat. Might as well turn those on as well. Then finally, make sure your cabin bleed air is on because you don't want to accidentally, uh, you know, choke out anybody in the back seat, which would be very uncomfortable. Now for the tricky part, setting up these two instruments. Fortunately, setting the top instrument to make sure it's correctly aligned to a magnetic north is simply a matter of reaching over and pushing this button. If everything is good, it should be pretty well set already. This instrument, on the other hand, is a little bit trickier to set up. To set this instrument up, we have to actually know what true north is locally. Now, you can either look that up, you could actually go on this thing and it'll tell you precisely what all this is, or if you're the kind of person who likes to cheat a little bit, if you go up into settings under data output and input, come on down to where it says um, uh, pitch roll headings, click that switch, close that, it tells you your true heading right here of 338.9 degrees. Let's zoom in a little bit. Looks like we're off a little bit. So I'll bring up my right panel, and now I'm simply going to disengage the instrument for just a minute and squeak it just a little bit that way. Perfect. Go ahead and turn that on. By the way, latitude is simply a setting of what your local latitude is. To check what your local latitude is, my method is again to go back over to Sky Vector and move the screen so it's right where we're starting. We're actually at the end of this run right away here. Looks good. And you can see our latitude is 40 degrees. 40 degrees. Make sure the switch is up. Go ahead and close it. That instrument's ready to go. All right, let's see what we got. On GV heat, cap of bleed air, radar. Ooh, very important. Make sure we turn on that radar. We're going to need it in a minute. Get that thing warming up. ADF radios. We're going to go ahead and get those started as well. We're going to put them on automatic mode or comp one. There's that radio there. This radio right here as well. Awesome. Sure end, not going to bother. NCNS. NCNS, I'm actually going to switch to high voltage mode. I'm not going to turn on the counter until we've circled the airport and gotten back to the middle. Again, the reason for this is if we were to start the NCNS right now, we'd get to about this point, have to make a big old right turn, come around this way, and try to get lined up. If we bank the airplane too much at any point during these turns, we're going to accidentally throw off the measurement of it. And especially since water is going to be involved, which is going to mess us up a little later on, we want to be very careful about that. So instead, I'm actually going to take off, take a left, come around this way, line myself up back with this course, and start the uh, counters right in the middle so that I know that we have the most accurate course possible. And then we'll start zeroing it in until we get to our first waypoint. We'll get to that in a minute. Our first heading, by the way, is going to be 85 degrees true. So I might as well get that all set up. 95 degrees true. I believe our first heading magnetic is going to be 79 degrees. Might as well get that set up as well. Uh, it's 60, 79, I suppose. Oh, they look like they're pretty darn aligned this time. That's good news. 
I'm going to go ahead and shut off that display up at the top. We don't need to see that right now. Awesome. We are now ready to get going. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue my checklist. Everything looks good. Artificial horizons. Automatic trip. Let's go ahead and warm up the automatic pilot. It's going to be our best friend today. Again, I like to use GDI mode because it uh, tends to be a little bit more accurate for the kind of flying that I do. Alright, auto trim, artificial horizons, autopilot course, autopilot pitch, nose wheel steering, we took care of that. Before takeoff, transponder, mode C, stick up here, altitude reporting on, green light came on, good. Flaps, 15 degrees. Lovely. Landing lights, we did all that. Radar mode, drift slash meteo. Meteo simply means uh, meteorological or weather. I like to leave it in drift mode because it allows me to take a quick glance to see which way the plane's actually gliding. The green light's on, so we're in good shape. Drift mode is on. You're not going to see anything until we actually get moving. So we're going to kind of keep an eye out for that. One thing that I did skip out, which we need to fix real quick, is to make sure that the altimeters are set correctly. I believe our QNH, if I check this real fast, uh, it's 1011. So I'll go ahead and set that real quick. Ooh, negative altitude. Go over here. Go ahead and bring up your info page if you need to check it. It does the conversion for you. So 1011. All right, looks good. Come over to this side. We're just going to make sure they all say 1011, or at least as close as we can get it. Looks good, looks good. So you can see we're just about sea level, which makes sense given our position of the Caspian. That's good, that's good. Continue with the checklist, make sure we didn't miss anything. Alright, let's do it. So we cannot forget, when we take off, we're going to be taking that left turn, swinging back around the runway, and then heading on this particular course that we selected a little bit earlier. Alright, go ahead and disengage our pitch steps. And let's get this show on the road. just a little bit of power at first and then gently let it increase and away we go fortunately it's not as windy as it was last time a little bit of shake there nothing too too concerning nose is going to start getting very light in a second there we go I'll let it come up and we are airborne very good. I'll go ahead and stick my head out the window a little bit so I can see the end of the runway. Bring up the landing gear. Now remember, when the landing gear come up, once you get that call out from your co-pilot, that's going to be the signal for you to go ahead and press the G key or the landing gear key again to actually disengage them. Take a look outside, make sure everything looks okay. Looks pretty good to me. We're climbing pretty steep, but we're just trying to get a, just a little bit of altitude here. Alright, start bringing up the flaps. Looks good. We're going to sink down just a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and level ourselves out, reduce myself to climb power. Let me know. And then I'm going to execute a nice banked left turn and actually swing us back around over the runway itself. And then we're going to engage our counters. The counters in the NCNS system are unable to process drift correctly if you tilt the aircraft more than 10 degrees or bank the aircraft more than 10 degrees. So it's something you really want to kind of watch out for and kind of think ahead for. Kind of swing around here. It looks pretty good. Go ahead and cancel that out. So just a little bit of trim here. In just a second, we're going to finish my little racetrack here. All right, got it. So it looks like we're going to hit a little bit of clouds in a second. That should be all right. As long as we have a good view of the airfield when we come back over, I'm not too, too worried. Actually level us off a little bit here. Much more important to see in this particular case. Uh, sort of do what I do in the real plane. Go ahead and tilt myself down to make sure I can see. And increase my tilt just a little bit. Oop, a little bit of white out. Not good. The nice thing is in this particular scenario, we can always look back to our directional gyro or our compass to make sure that we're back on course. There's the middle of the runway. Gonna swing ourselves right around it and try to hit it at almost exactly the same angle as I want to be traveling in just a moment. 
getting a little warning telling me I'm banking too much, but ah, eh, my passengers will be all right. My uh, purser and stewardess, she may not appreciate it too much, but they'll forgive me. All right, I'm going to try to keep my altitude good. I'm going to actually bring up the NCNS page now and activate the counters right when I cross the middle of the runway. Or in this particular case, it's when I can see again. All right, we should just be about there now. All right, counters are on. I'm going to go back to climb power. Then I'm also going to engage the automatic pilot. Oop, we're already drifting a little bit. That's okay. Go ahead, Mr. Autopilot. Gotcha. All right, let's go ahead and center it out. Now let's bring up the NCNS. Now, just a quick review of this instrument. I'm actually going to increase my uh, angle just a little bit here. There we are. Try to climb on the second line I find works best. Perfect. Okay, so just a quick review of this instrument. This is basically a Doppler navigation set. It uses the radar signal in the airplane to feed this instrument here, which tells you how fast you're going over the ground and how much you're drifting. You can see right now we're drifting slightly to the right. This instrument here is telling us how far we have gone since we've activated the counters. This instrument here tells us how much we have drifted from the course we have dialed in here. So right now you can see we're about, uh, let's see, uh, one, two, three hundred and sixty meters to the left of our course. Uh, we'll correct for this in just a moment, but uh, right now I just want to get just a little bit of altitude. One thing we're watching out for today is when we cross over to the sea. When we switch over to the sea, we have to actually tell the Doppler unit, or the NCNS, that we're over water in order to compensate for the reduced radar return. All right, I'm actually going to execute a very graceful right turn here, just to start getting this to reel back in towards zero uh, deflection. Ooh, ooh, this is uh, pretty exciting stuff. Go ahead and click that sucker off. We're pretty good. Now, one thing we need to think about is since we didn't pre-dial in how far we wanted to travel, we need to actually keep an eye on this instrument to know exactly when we want to execute our next turn. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Sky Vector real quick. Looks like it's going to be a 40 nautical mile leg before that first turn. Now, if you remember, we started it pretty much right on time, so this should be pretty accurate. I'll switch back to this mode so you guys can see better. Okay, so 39.9 nautical miles is the distance we're going to be traveling. That's going to be 73.89 kilometers. So, when we go back to our NCNS, when this instrument reads, let's go ahead and check, 73.89, which will be, this hand here will be about here, and the other hand, long hand, is going to be about here. That will indicate that we have traveled the full length of this leg, at least to the best that this computer can calculate. We've just switched to crossing over the sea, so I want to make sure I hit that instrument. It's actually very difficult to see right now, but I'm pretty sure we just did. We're still a little to the left of our course, so I'm going to execute a very gentle turn to try to get us back on course and try to get this as close to zero as possible. Now, what we need to start thinking about is the next turn we're going to be making. I'm going to go ahead and shut off my uh, landing lights. Got just about high enough at this point. Is my next turn. So our next turn, go back here, is when we get to point Amoku. That turn is going to be taking us from 79 degrees to 91 degrees, or, more importantly, 85 degrees true to 97 degrees true. So if I were to go to this point in space, change this knob here to 97 degrees and just go for it, these two would accumulate errors relatively quickly, which unfortunately is not what we want. So fortunately, Felis has provided us with this great application on the, oop, not that one, this great application that allows us to calculate when we have to start our turn so that we get to the point exactly on time without any bias whatsoever. I'm actually going to nudge myself just a little bit more to the right here. Just trying to get this thing back towards zero. Remember, what's the distance we're looking for? 73.89, but that's going to change. So, 
let's go ahead and figure out how to calculate this. Course 1 refers to the course of the beginning. Course 2 is the course we're going to be on after we execute our turn. So in this case, course 0, I should say course 1, would be this number because we're on this lane right here, so 85 degrees. That's 80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our second course is going to be 97 degrees. Again, these are all true headings. Don't make that mistake. Good. Bank refers to how much you're going to tilt the plane to make the turn. In our particular case, we're barely going to bank the plane, because if you remember, if we tilt too far, we're going to get bad readings. So I'm actually going to drop this down just a little bit. I get the feeling our plane's flying at sort of a high angle of attack here. Just looks like the nose is up a little higher than I want it to be. So I'm actually going to manually drop it down a little bit. Make sure you always fly the plane, folks. True airspeed, I'm going to estimate it's going to be about 250 knots. Oh, my, um, sorry, kilometers an hour. With these calculations, coming up on 3,000 meters, with these calculations, it suggests that we need to start our turn 949 meters before our original calculated end of leg that the bias on the north instrument, which is this one here, should be set to minus 929, and that the bias on the east instrument should be set to 197. What I mean by this is this is how much distance the turn is going to take up of these two instruments in order to completely turn the aircraft. If we were to um, ignore these two and just start our turn here, we'd actually be too early and we'd end up hitting our next waypoint a little bit short, which we don't want to do. Fortunately, our left right wouldn't be too, too bad. It would only be a couple hundred meters off. To insert the bias into the actual NCNS is very simple. Simply come up here and select the screws. It looks like our, it's going to be 929 meters. So go ahead and do the closest we can do is minus 0 0.09. And then the east is going to be 197, or the closest we can do is going to be 0.2 kilometers. Now the 949 is going to be a little bit trickier. The 949, if this, since this is a positive number, that's something we have to subtract from our leg length. If I look back over here, if we were to travel all the way to here and turn without taking into account that extra kilometer or so, we would be turning back um, actually over here. And by the time we finished our turn, we'd be all the way over here, which is too far. Instead, we want to do our turn nice and graceful, as you'll see on the red map. Anyway, so if you remember, our total distance that we're keeping an eye on, ooh, this is looking great today. All right. Our total distance is 73.8948 kilometers. Now, again, we have to take this into account. If we don't start our turn earlier, we're going to end up missing our turn. So now we have to take our distance. I'm always going to double check. Good thing we did. Let's see here, 73.8948, right? Should really just use copy paste like a smart person. Now we have to subtract 949 meters, or in my particular case, 0.949 kilometers, which means our point to start the turn is going to be at 72.9458 kilometers. Uh oh, we're starting to drift the other way. Hopefully, that takes that drift out. We're coming up on 4,000 meters, by the way, our cruise altitude. So, anyway. This instrument now shows that we're 45 kilometers away from when we activated the instrument. 45 kilometers on our little chart here will be somewhere about here, which is good. We're going to start our turn to the next leg, which is going to be this leg between Amaku and Rodar, when we get to 70, oops, sorry, 72.9458 kilometers. Again, if we had not taken this into account, we would have done this weird. You'll see this again in about 10 minutes when we actually finish our turn, setting ourselves up for the next turn. Looks like we're just about up to our cruise altitude. Always press the level off button about 50, about 30 meters before you actually get there. So I'm actually going to press the level off button right now. You can see that we've drifted about 100 meters off course. So I'm going to bring the aircraft slightly to the left to compensate for that. All right, 50 kilometers. Now, a good navigator would have a stopwatch to keep track of all this, but um, unfortunately, it's just us today. I'm going to go ahead and reduce our power to... That looks good there, about 55, 52%, something like that. And we're going to try to get our true airspeed, which is indicated by the short handle, by the way, to about 450, like we calculated here. Again, this is ground speed. This is not necessarily the same thing as airspeed. All right, I'm actually going to perfect this a little bit. 
little bit too far off for my liking. All right, go ahead and take a look at my calculator. 72.94. I don't need this right now. Well, we'll need it later, but... All right, we're coming up on 55 kilometers. I can already feel the tension. This would be probably a good time to tell um, Nasty Cut to start serving the drinks and all that other good stuff. Ah, there we go. Now we're starting to come back. Looks like we're actually coming back a little too fast. Sorry, passengers. I don't mean to whip you around so much. Oh, boy. 120 meters off. That's close enough, right? Nah, we'll do it perfectly. Uh, a little bit to the right. Keep an eye on that instrument. 72.94. 72.94. Not what I was about to do at 73. There's 61 kilometers. We're still about 100 meters too far to the right. So I'm going to come very gently over this way again. Notice our ADF needles are just spinning loops because we haven't been able to pick up our destination ADF yet. Ooh, we're getting very close. Less than 10 kilometers to go. And you'll notice that since our drift isn't that much, our true heading in this instrument, and I should say, our map angle selector is basically at the same point. And we're very lucky the wind isn't so bad, it's making it tricky today. By the way, our true airspeed is getting a little on the high side, so I'm actually going to reduce power a little bit to try to get this closer to 450, which we calculated by. We really don't want to be going too fast when we get to our turn point. Because otherwise, we take our turn too wide. Alright, getting close. Alright, we're still a little to the left, or a little to the right, rather. Alright, that should be better. Hopefully that brings us a little closer. Oh boy, 450 odds better. Just try to play with the power. 70 kilometers. 71 kilometers. Alright, I'm going to pause right when we get there. Coming up on 72 kilometers. 72, check it one more time, 0.94, so right when it gets to this point. Yeah, that's how it's done. Okay, we're now going to execute our turn. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and load in these values we got off the phone directly into this unit. So by instead of clicking here, I'm going to click right in the middle. You'll notice it set it to minus 0.9 kilometers. Now when I click here, it's going to set it to 0.2 kilometers or 200 meters to the right. When I finish my turn, which again is going to be a turn from heading of 8.5 to 9.7, theoretically, this instrument should show zero. And this instrument here will actually start climbing upwards. And we'll calculate how far it needs to climb upwards in a second. So anyway, go ahead and double check. It's going to be a right turn. I'm going to go over to my automatic pilot selector, and I'm going to click two to the right. Whoa, careful. One, two to the right, which is going to be a 10 degree bank. Don't use more than 10. I'm going to come over to here, double check to make sure those are OK. Clear them out to make sure I don't forget. Now, if all goes according to plan, when this instrument, oh, might as well go ahead and dial that in in a second, reads, now, hold on, 97 degrees true, we should be heading perfectly on course, having executed a turn that will drop us right onto this line with no deviation. Here we go. Now watch this instrument actually count down as they start getting closer. Now depending on the kind of uh, wind that we have and things along those lines, it can have a very large effect on how much we drift or don't drift. Ooh, it looks like we're going to have a pretty good amount of deviation here. Alright, that shows course. Go ahead and drop it to zero. Oh, we're actually winding up the other way. Hmm. Take a look at the phone calculation again real quick. Oh, 197. We're actually going to have to bring a turn the other way, but let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> for those of you keeping track at home, uh, I just wanted to show you just how close I was able to get. Notice I executed the turn almost perfectly. This little 200 meters here, again, I must have miscalculated when I started, but you can see just how incredibly close, without any outside influence, I was able to hit this point right there. Very impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start correcting immediately. It looks like we need to come a little more to the left. Maybe the wind's changed a little on us. All right, start swinging this way. I saw my mistake. Did you see it? This instrument was setting correctly. Now 
That's going to mess us up later. That also shows you how difficult some of these instruments can be to read. Because again, we were supposed to have set it to 97. We'll do the best we can with what we have, as they say. Alright, we're going to start backing this up and get this sucker back to zero. Now we've created an interesting little mistake, and now we're going to have to try to come up with a way to fix it. Now, our navigator has no ability to look out this window and go, Oh, whoops, we made a wrong turn. I see the mountain. So we're going to have to come up with another way to approach this. So we're going to have to rely on some other things that are around us in order to determine. By the way, before we do any of that, let's go ahead and calculate things as if we did them uh, correctly. So this leg to get to Rodar now, between Amku and Rodar, is going to be a distance of 26.7 nautical miles or 49.4484 kilometers. By the way, let's take a look at our speed. Our speed is good. This is starting to go the wrong direction. Go ahead and swing us back the other way. Which means we need to execute our next turn when we get to 49 kilometers on this instrument, which is coming up very, very soon. Now, just like before, we're actually going to use our phone to determine exactly what our new coordinates are going to be. Our first one's going to be 97 degrees. Go ahead and level the plane off real quick. Our next one is going to be, let's take a look here, 103 degrees. Hopefully we set it right this time. So it looks like our bias this time is going to be uh, 473 meters to start the turn, 471 uh, negative on north, which is going to be about minus 0.5, and about <laughs> not very much on the east instrument there. So I'm going to try to walk this backwards as best we can. At this point, my uh, fearless uh, navigator would have realized his mistake, which happens to be me, and would start working immediately to try to find some sort of uh, reference point that we could use to check to see how on course or not on course we are. I'm actually going to start backing this up just a little bit. We can actually insert our course mistake directly into this instrument using this bias function to fix it. And we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of fancy flying here. Bring us back over to get that needle to stop turning. That should do it. A little bit to the other direction. Okay, back to what we were doing. So, our total length on this leg is going to be just like we did before, 49.4484 kilometers minus 473 for how long our turn's going to be. Whoop, looks like we need to come back to the left just a little bit. Sorry, Nastika, I didn't mean to launch your drip beverage drink a cart around. Come a little bit more to the left. There we go. So it's going to be 473 meters. So let's go ahead and do some copy-paste this time. Calculate. Paste minus 0.473. So at 48.9754 kilometers is going to be the length of our leg. Keeping in mind our little mistake is probably going to put us slightly north of this point, which is why we're going to need to rely on the VOR at Turkmenbashi in order to get us in. All right, looking like we're a little more straightened out here. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay, take a look very carefully. We're going to go to 103 true this time. 48.9754, or 32 not, uh, 32 kilometers rather. Checking my airspeed. Airspeed, whoop, go ahead and close the phone. Don't need it right this second. Airspeed is just a little over 450, so I'm going to back the throttle back just a little bit. There we are. Save a little bit of gas, too, why not? Come a little bit to the right. Perfect. So, even though our course is off a little bit, at least we're on here. Back it up a little to this direction. Sorry, Nastika. There we go. Right on. Too bad it's right off. <laughs> All right, 489784. Okay, so it's going to be about here. We do have a view. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, we're getting a VOR reading, and we're slightly off. Unfortunately, I don't have a good chart in which to measure that from, so we'll have a really difficult time in the air here to figure out exactly how far off we are. So we're going to do the best we can with what we have. There we go. Looks like we're actually getting a reading. Somewhere around 97. Uh-oh. 
We're getting very close. What's our distance again? 48.9754. Oh boy. So it's going to be right in there. Should watch that thing swinging in a second. There it goes. Well, fortunately, we know exactly where the other airport is. All right, that's 45 kilometers. We're going to be executing our turn in just a moment. We're going to cheat and pause. All right, looking good. Check it again. Check it twice. That's... Uh We're going for 974, which is going to be right about here. Eh, close. Alright, first things first, I'm going to set this instrument correctly to the next true heading, which is going to be, let's take a look here, 103 degrees. Good. Now I'm going to dial in the bias. Excellent. So now we're going to come over here and take our turn. Remember which direction your turn is. This is going to be a right turn. So I'm going to go ahead and dial this twice to the right. And now we're going to unpause. Ideally, when our turn has finished, by the way, we're going for about 103 degrees, which is right about here or so, this should stop winding. Or at the very least, we can use this instrument to determine if we've got close. Got a little bit of a drift here, which could definitely be affecting us. It looks like we're going to have to go a little bit more. Whoop. Come a little bit left. Now, theoretically, and I messed up once again, we should be pretty close to Rodar. And you can see that we executed our turn actually pretty darn close, despite my little mistake earlier. <laughs> you can see that pretty clearly. And we almost did it again, but we did catch ourselves. So our next point is going to be all the way here at Tugar. So this is where all that accumulated air is really going to start building up, as you'll see. Go ahead and continue that turn, 103 degrees. Wish these instruments were easier to read. All right, almost out of it. That needle's moving pretty slow now. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and see what our next leg length is going to be. So, Rodar to Tugar. Rodar to Tugar, it's going to be 98 degrees. Might as well set that while we're at it. There we go. And you can see we're just about on course. Drifting slightly to the right, but that's okay. All right, Rodar to Tugar is 51.4. We're actually going to speed up a little bit for this one. That's 95 kilometers, so it's going to be a bit of a ride. Go ahead and get the engine rolling a little bit quicker. Make up a little bit of time we lost earlier. Awesome. Uh, this instrument's looking pretty good. It looks like we need to give just a quick little blast to the right. Things should be much better. So we're waiting now. Since we're not going to be using the NCNS for our final approach, we're going to use the VOR when we actually get there. But we're going to go ahead and use, let's see here, a distance between the two. It's going to be 26.1 nautical miles, which is about that distance. Pretty good. We'll probably just keep whatever heading we're on, keeping an eye out the right, and going ahead and taking a right turn to land. Ah, that's going to come out very nice. Okay, now we're just going to kick back and enjoy the flight. Go ahead and close that before we get any problems. All right, 95.1928. Whew, that is a ride. Now all we can really do is try to get that as accurate as we can. Meanwhile, our uh, navigator, myself, who keeps goofing up this instrument, unfortunately, please watch out for this, is uh, going to be busy uh, trying to figure out exactly how far off we are. But I can tell you from just looking at this real quick, we're not that far off. Go ahead and close that. And we're not getting anything on the DME yet. Good time to check fuel, by the way. So we have about 1,800 kilograms left. Uh, this instrument does not show 1,800, but that's okay. Well, looks like uh, we can come a little bit closer. There we are. Looks good. That's pretty darn close. So we're about 100 meters left of our broken course here. But uh, that's still quick enough. And you can see, again, this is this instrument actually increments by twos and not by ones, which makes it even trickier to get this right. But uh, given our little boo-boos here and there, we're actually doing very well. And we're going to continue to do so.
You can see our ground speed is about 480 kilometers an hour. So getting out my trusty E6B, which I trust all of you at home have as well, we can quickly calculate how long it's going to take us to get there. Let's see here, 481. Total distance of, let's see, we're going to 95 or 25. That's 70 kilometers. 70 kilometers looks like it's just shy of nine minutes to get there, which isn't too bad. Keeping in mind, this instrument builds up errors over time, so even if we did everything perfectly, perfectly, perfect, we still would have problems from time to time. I'm going to go ahead and clear these two out, because we're not going to be using them for a final turn anyway. We're going to start our descent into our destination airport, probably when we get to within, say, 65 or 70 kilometers. And then our final approach heading, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Uh, let's see here, what is this guy right here? It's going to be this way, let's go ahead and take a quick look. Again, this is a wonderful tool, Sky Vector. We're going to be landing most likely, since the wind is coming out of the south, we're probably going to be landing on 16 right. Ooh, very long runway. 16 right is going to be about 162 degrees. So we might as well get that pre-programmed, kind of get things going. Kind of getting ready. We're not going to do an ILS approach or anything like that. We don't need to because it's pretty clear. Looking pretty good. Let's double check to make sure I'm on the right frequency. Absolutely not. We were still on the frequency for uh, Baku. So we might as well change that out now. 112.30. There we are. And we're not actually detecting it yet, but I'm not too, too concerned about that. Helps if your DME is turned on, folks. Yeah, it looks good. We're still about 100 meters to the left of our course. We'll go ahead and correct that very, very gently. Basically, as soon as you see the wheel turning, that's usually enough to kind of get you drifted back where you need to go. Ah, look at this. It appears as if one of our ADFs has just detected our destination. Excellent. So again, that was a frequency of 580, plus looks like 30, which would be 610, which as you guys remember, ah, that's definitely where we need to be. It's Whiskey Zulu. <laughs> Excellent. Hopefully we pick up that other frequency soon as well. Looking pretty good. Again, we're not going to be to our next waypoint until this instrument says about 95. Uh, what was it exactly? 95.1928. But by then, we'll be locked onto the DME and we'll be able to get pretty darn close to our airport. Might as well set in our approach course for 14 right while we're at it going to be, let's see here, 162 degrees. Again, this is a magnetic instrument. Looks good. Might as well slave it real quick. Ah, looks like we were doing pretty right so far. All right, 50 kilometers. You can see we're about 75 kilometers, or meters, I should say, off of our course. Remember that this course has been slightly off because of not reading this instrument correctly. Please watch out for this, folks. You do not want to goof that up. Now, would the computer have made that mistake? Probably not. So your ground speed is just shy of 500. It looks like uh, we're doing pretty well here. We're making pretty good time. I'm actually going to start descending in just a moment. All right, looks like we're doing pretty good. Now we're almost 50 meters off our imaginary course that we set for ourselves, which is pretty, pretty impressive, if you ask me. Wow, look at that. Caspian, oh, actually, if you look very carefully at the right here, you can start to see land, which is quite a godsend after this flight. A couple little boo-boos here. We still look like we're going to make it just fine. Now, if this had a very, very strong quartering crosswind, this would have been a much trickier flight as far as getting everything perfectly lined up, but we did a pretty good job at the end. Really surprised that the DME... Oh, <laughs> Spoke too soon. We're starting to get some information from our DMA, which means we have detected our destination airport, which says we're about 74 kilometers away. It's definitely time to start wandering back down. So I'm going to switch to automatic pilot, click the pitch off, click it back on again, and 
gonna go ahead and select descend at the same time as reducing power. You really don't want to reduce power too much in a descent because uh, the aircraft is going to go into a very, very coarse pitch and it makes a lot of noise. It tends to slow you down very quickly. We definitely want to keep some of our speed up. Let's take a look at the NCNS. We started to dive a little bit so that could affect us, especially if there's a strong wind coming from a different direction at a lower altitude. That can get very tricky. Go ahead and pull us a little to the left here to get us a little bit more straightened out. Let's take a look. Uh, our airspeed's looking pretty good. It's getting a little fast, so maybe I'll bring my power back just a little more. There we are. And now we're coming back down. It's good. We'll level off at probably about a thousand meters. Looks good. Remember when this instrument shows that we're at... Check it again. Make sure you write this down. 95.19, we should be just about where we need to be. And we're picking up that NDB too. So this has been a very successful flight despite, again, a couple little mistakes that were completely avoidable. But I'm gonna leave them in anyway because it's important that you know what to watch out for, folks. And we're coming up on our next point. We'll go ahead and check the map in a second to see how good we did. Again, we're going to stay on this heading until this needle actually starts to deflect because uh, that's what we're going to end up turning to in a minute anyway. You can see we're heading this way. We're going to add a meeting point this way to get to the runway, about 60 kilometers away. Speed looks pretty good. Plenty of fuel in both gas tanks. I'm going to flick on the landing lights in just a moment. Probably should get the ATIS frequency and all that other good stuff. See what the weather's like over there. Good way to do that if you go to your local map. Zoom way, way in. Click on the airport. It gives you the frequencies up here. Oh, be that way. Looks like the altimeter is 2991, though. So we'll go ahead and get that set up. 10,000 feet. Go ahead and throw on the landing lights. I always like to watch the landing lights poke out of the wings of this plane. I just think they're kind of cute. All right, 82 kilometers. Coming down under 9,000 feet. Start getting ready for landing. Uh, Nastika and Svetlana, if you could please take your seats. We're going to be landing shortly. Awesome. That was terrible. I apologize. Okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right. We'll go ahead and set those altimeters up now. Switch to my info page. It said it was 2991. Down to this guy. Whoop. Looks like the closest we can get is to 1013. So we'll go ahead and use 1013. Come back onto this side. Looks like uh, we'll go ahead and set that up as well. Perfect, perfect. Good to go. Uh, we set our minimums a little while ago, so I'm not too concerned about that just yet. Make a quick double check on that runway. I've never actually landed here before. This is a new experience. 162, 162, 162. Yeah, looks good. Ah, doesn't look good. This needle should be over here because we're supposed to be approaching that position. Ooh, gotta watch out for this little guy. There we go. Now the red light's on too. Now this is where it needs to be. Excellent. Oh, by the way, I believe we're just about crossing our position. Look at that. Good thing I thought to check. 95.1928. 95.19. Stop. Let's go ahead and take a look at our map, see how we did. Ah, oh, so close. But it's very important that everybody can kind of see how we made a little mistake here. That little mistake added up to a bigger mistake when we got to the next waypoint, which was multiplied by the earlier waypoint as well. So it's very important to see that. But at the same time, you really have to be impressed with how close you're able to get that using a Doppler navigation system. So I'm actually going to disengage the counters, zero those out, and now it's going to be time to start actually set myself up for a good old-fashioned landing. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Ooh, looks like we're getting a little bit of fog here. I'm actually going to switch the radar on to weather mode real quick. There we are, get that little radar sweep going. No, it looks like it's clear. Just a little thick and probably a little hazy. What do we have for a temperature today? Good. Whoa, get that seat out of my face. Looks like we're at minus... Let's see, it's going to be minus 7 degrees, which is very cold. Very, very cold. But we'll be alright. 
again, we're looking for any deflection of this needle, because that's going to indicate that we're pretty well lined up. Going back to our original plan, I can close this now. Going back to original plan, that's going to indicate that we need to take this right turn. And now we wait. Airspeed's pretty good, power's pretty good, all instruments are set, plane is ready. It's good. By the way, there's a switch right here that locks the throttles in whatever position you put them in. Don't hit this switch. You're always going to forget and wonder why the plane doesn't want to slow down. Alright folks, we're just about there. You can almost see Suko going to war with some bandits. <laughs> no, that would be way up that way. But it is a funny thought. Alright, where is that airport? somewhere on our right. Eh, we'll find it soon enough. Okay, we're almost to about a thousand meters. We'll go ahead and level off at 600 meters. Remember, when you go to level this off using the horizon option in the automatic pilot, it works best if you actually press that button about 100 meters before you need to level off. When you're climbing, you want to press it about 50 meters before you get to your altitude that you want. You can always take over and fly it by hand too, which is usually my personal preference, but I'm doing five things at once here, so you'll have to forgive me. Right. Keeping an eye on our instrument here. It's probably going to be one... I think it's a five degree magnetic deviation. There we go. So that's about roughly what it's going to look like when we take our turn. Okay, keeping an eye on that instrument. Our co-pilot will be busy telling us that it's uh, right over here on our right. You can actually watch this needle go shh all the way down. For those of you interested in kind of getting a feel for where we are, you can see we're just about on course. Everything's been going pretty well. Jen, the NCNS is a great system. One little mistake, like I demonstrated twice, is enough to really throw you off course. If you use this with other radio navigation aids, or in some cases visual aids, to get you from point A to point B, it works great. Again, don't forget to make sure you use that little phone to calculate your turns when you need to start your turn, what bias you need to enter, and you'll be very successful. And also, don't forget to don't bank the plane more than 10 degrees, or you're going to give yourself all sorts of tricky problems. So watch out for that. All right, we should be getting in sight of the airport in just a moment here. Uh, it's out there somewhere. By the way, we're just crossing 800 meters. We're going to start our leveling off procedure in just a moment. Looks like we're 16 kilometers away. I think we're going to end up rounding the nose off on this thing a little bit tighter than I wanted to, but we'll be all right. Yeah. Okay, like I said, you want to level yourself off a little early for this plane. Go ahead and bring my power back up. Don't need to go too fast because we do need to start slowing down here. That's why it's always nice to have two sets of eyes in a cockpit. Distance is about 12.2 kilometers. That would be a real shame if they didn't actually model this airport. In which case, ah, look what we just found. Hello. Right there, just like we predicted it would be slightly off of our right, which also means that we're slightly south of where we want it to be, which, let's take a look at the drift. Nope, no excuses for. Again, that was because we chose to go straight rather than taking that corner like we did originally in this plan here. We're actually a little bit closer because of that earlier mistake. We're about right here, I'd say. Again, that's why you have a navigator and you have a pilot. Alright, I'm coming in pretty good. I'm going to start reducing my speed to get me down to approach speed of about 300 kilometers an hour. Goodbye, Mr. Automatic Pilot. I don't need you anymore. Go jump over in the right seat. Sorry if I'm making anybody dizzy, but it just makes it a little easier to see exactly what's going on. Alright, let's go ahead and bring us down. Automatic Pilot disengage. Back the power up. Hold the nose up just a little bit to go ahead and bleed off that speed. There's runway. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of an S-turn here to slow down. Go ahead and activate nose wheel steering for takeoff and landing. Landing gear down. Don't forget to lock the landing gear after they go down. 
go ahead and bring down my first 15 degrees of flaps, and I'm actually going to swing myself around and line up that runway. Alright, this plane's going to start getting real noisy in a second. Go ahead and tilt myself up so I can see the runway a little better. Alright, looks good. Bring up a little bit more flaps. We'll go all the way down because we're very high. Sorry, passengers. Alright, looks good. Nose is down a bit. And talk about a non proper approach. Wait. So what happens when we come too far south? Yeah, I'm not thrilled with this. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a nice, gentle overhead approach here. Don't forget to bring the power back in. You would not want to stall on this turn. That looks good. Just going to kind of hang a nice little gentle turn. Now, uh, for those of you who have experimented with some other uh, Russian made planes and the X plane opportunities, or I should say, options, long day. Uh, there's an Antonov 2, known as the Anushka, which is very unique if you're into something a little bit different that happen also happens to be powered by a propeller. And um, landing approaches with that aircraft are very unique because you can essentially land the plane as if it was a helicopter. Unfortunately, with a plane this big and this heavy, we can't pull off something like that. Left bank too much. Oh my. We'll be fine. Peek out the window here and try to find our destination. Ah, now we're better lined up. Whoop. Careful. This is why your traffic control is, again, your friend, everybody. It's a little bit more left rudder. Looks like we got the outer marker. And you can see our VOR is finally correctly lined up, but that's all right. Much better. I'm sure we just held up about three days' worth of traffic, but... Oh well, what are you going to do? You can see our VOR is very nicely lined up. We're doing like an artificial VOR approach, but that's okay. Coming in a little fast. Again, try not to let your power drift under 20% in this aircraft, because you're going to find that it just dies on you. That's pretty good right there. Again, your final approach speed should be somewhere around 190 to 200 kilometers an hour. Your final approach vertical speed should be usually between 2 and 3 meters a second. Right now I'm coming out at about 3.5 and, and there's a giant pole about to run into me. So I'm going to speed up just a teeny tiny bit. There we go. be nice if they had some appreciate approach indicators, but we'll deal. Okay, come down just a little bit. Coming in a little fast, but that's okay. Bring the nose down just a little bit. Again, very tricky engine settings in this turboprop. Looks pretty good right there. Two meters a second. Over the threshold. Past the minimums. We'll leave the power in to adjust about onto the ground. There we are. Back the power out really slowly. And we're on the ground. Let that nose come down nice and gently. And we're here. All right, folks, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, again, if you're going to use the NCNS, don't forget, everything has got to be a true heading. Make sure you calculate your turns well in advance or avoid turns if you can. And also, thank you for watching. And um, if you need any help or anything that you'd like to say, just leave it in the comments. Send me a message on the X-Plane forums. Other than that, enjoy.